Hey, Ray Dalvecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And I bet there's a thought amongst people who use WordPress of whether or not the new block theme system is going to kill the visual page builder competitors such as Divi, Elementor, Beaver Builder, and a handful of others. So I want to talk about this topic today. We'll go into a brief history of the WordPress system. I'm not going to dig into every single specific, but I want to give you an idea of how it used to work versus how it works now. And we'll compare each of these visual builders so that you can figure out which one is going to work best for you. Now, WordPress has been around for a really long time, but you can kind of look at it as two main eras, and that's classic WordPress versus WordPress that uses blocks. So within classic WordPress, all the themes were built with PHP, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And whoever programmed that theme, whether it's a solo developer or a theme company, they would have an options page within the WordPress admin area, and that's where you would customize. So the visual component was actually separated from the way you would customize. So a lot of times you would go to customize, and then you'd go to refresh your page, and something wouldn't look quite right. And it was harder to make that connection as to what was causing it. So the way that you get around this is you would make a child theme and that gave you full control where you could hack into the theme files, the template code that runs all your templates. And you can write your own code using these code languages above to get exactly what you wanted. But obviously you did have to have that technical expertise in order to do this. So it wasn't that great for people who had design skills but didn't know code. And honestly, most people who use WordPress, they probably aren't designers or coders. They're just somebody who has a website or wanted to create a website. They might not care that much about design. So they would pick a theme based on how it looked from the live demo. And they may want like one or two really specific features and they had no idea how to implement it. So now that brings us to block editing, the block editing era. And this started in March 2018 with Gutenberg Blocks. Before, with classic WordPress, you would use what's now known as the classic editor. And I always compared that to Microsoft Word. There was a toolbar up top. You would write at the bottom in the visual editor there. And you'd be able to, to make something bold, make it a title, insert an image, and do all that in one block, so to speak. And the Gutenberg update made block editing the default way to update your page and post content. So pretty much each element was divided into its own block. So you have paragraph blocks, image blocks, etc. Each block is a standalone element and has its own settings, whereas everything was kind of combined into one thing within that classic editor. And then they took that one step further where you can design your entire website using blocks, not just the page and the post content. And that was known as full site editing. This was rolled out in November 2021. And so now you can pretty much design every one of the templates that you would have to do with code before visually using block editing. That includes your header and your footer, which that was a big sticking point with classic WordPress. It was a lot harder to edit those because most themes didn't have that built into the theme options. And since November 2021, when this came out, there's been lots of UI updates to the full site editing feature within WordPress. And it's funny because I think I've done, I want to say maybe five to six long form full site editing tutorials using the various themes that WordPress has put out since these dates. And each time that I recorded one, there was something new where I would get to a step that I did in a previous tutorial and I had to relearn it because the UI was changed around, had a different look, a setting was in a different place. So if you'd like to actually see me build a website with full site editing, I'll link up the most recent tutorial in the top right here. Now, because the classic editor didn't allow you to build visually, independent theme developers essentially solved this drag and drop design problem before full site editing became a thing. That's exactly what Divi and Elementor do. The difference is that they're paid software. So they were designed to have more features out of the box. And like I mentioned, you would do most of your design with code with CSS. And if you make the connection, basically the settings behind Divi and Elementor, they're more closely linked with more CSS properties than what WordPress offers right now with full site editing. And I've always been transparent that I installed Divi on all my websites. It's funny because I went through this process in between themes where I was using an older theme that stopped development. I had known about Divi for a couple of years beforehand. In fact, I even purchased it, but I didn't use it on my websites because I was just a creature of habit. I was into my own workflow using an older theme. But like I said, when they stopped development, I switched all my websites over to Divi. And this is exactly how I feel about block themes. Even though I could totally see using a block theme on a client website, my process right now is with Divi. I still think Divi is going to be a great theme option for many years to come. So I have no intention on converting any of my current websites over to a block theme that's free. And of course, just like block editing, I have a handful of tutorials where I went through creating an entire website with Divi. I'll link that up 
in the top right as well. And check all these links in the description below if you want to see them. Now, what are the pros of using a block theme? The main one is that block themes are integrated with WordPress. Every time WordPress puts out an update, it's going to include something to do with block themes. So there's less of a chance that you're going to have a conflict either with a plugin or one of the default aspects of WordPress outside of the theme system. We all know it's free, so that's perfect for beginners. You can get started with WordPress, which is free, block themes, which are free. You can edit your site visually, and the only thing you got to pay for is your domain and your hosting. For what it's worth, all of my websites are currently hosted with SiteGround. They have a lot of great WordPress tools built in. I'll link them up in the description below if you don't have your website created yet. And last but not least, block themes, especially the ones that are developed by WordPress, they're going to be lightweight and fast. You know, one of the downsides that people say about Divi and Elementor is that their software is bloated. It takes up a lot of space, and sometimes that does slow down the website. Now, in my experience, especially with Divi, they have theme optimization settings. And if you go through those and you follow just a handful of rules of thumb about optimizations like optimizing your image size before you upload it to WordPress. You can get your sites using Divi and Elementor very fast. Of course, there are going to be some cons to using a block theme. So if you really are particular about the design, I still believe that Divi and some of the other page builders give you more control. For instance, Divi has a whole suite of animations built in. Because it is core WordPress software, you're probably going to have slower feature releases. They're trying to keep the WordPress core code clean and optimized. And then maybe the biggest one right now is that there's less pre-built layouts. So you can go to their library of pre-built layouts, and they also have a marketplace where you can download layouts for an entire website and install that. So you have a fully featured website in minutes. If we go back to the classic WordPress system, one of the downsides of that was you would look at a template demo and when you installed it you'd almost have a blank website because you had to set the website up yourself and when you import a divi layout it's pretty much the opposite where you get exactly what you're looking at with the demo so of course i want to know what you think if you're watching this you obviously know about wordpress or have used it recently so what do you use you know what's your preferred theme have you updated to using a block theme or are you still on the classic system completely with a classic theme and using the classic editor i know a lot of people are slow to change they don't want to update their own processes and i'm kind of this way but because of my youtube i've stayed on top of a lot of these updates more so than i probably would have had i not been making wordpress tutorials so let me know in the comments below Depending on where you're at, I have a couple of things that might help you out. So if you are new to WordPress, check out my WordPress training. I go much more in detail into the back end, and I'll take you through the entire WordPress system. You can get to that by going to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash WP101. Or if you're experienced with WordPress, you've built a bunch of websites and you want to start freelancing with those skills, manage websites for local businesses around you. That's how I earn money from WordPress. So check out the tools that I use. You can download that cheat sheet, 15 tools to start your web design business from my homepage, WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And as I previously mentioned, just check out the description. I'll include all of these links that we went through today. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you leave your comment about about what theme you're using and what you think about these changes within WordPress. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get all future WordPress tutorials. Thanks so much for watching and I'll link up a few other videos here if you wanna keep on learning.